Boston priests molested kids in six different parishes over the last 30 years. The church found out about it and did nothing. We haven't committed any long-term investigative resources to the case. No, we haven't. And that's the kind of thing your team would do. Spotlight. So, the work that you're most well known for is the investigation of the sex abuse scandal within the Catholic Church, which was the subject of the movie Spotlight and earned you a Pulitzer Prize for Public Service. How much were you involved in the making of that film? We, we were approached in probably late 2007, early 2008, by a pair of young Hollywood producers who told us that they thought that the Clergy Sex Abuse Project had movie potential. We thought they were kind of nuts because we felt like this was an incredibly grim topic. It's about priests molesting children. Who is gonna to wanna to watch that? And I actually thought it was a really bad idea to get involved with Hollywood because I figured all they can do is embarrass us. They're gonna sensationalize and, and uh, you know, it's gonna be like a typical movie, in my view, or a TV show about journalism that I think often stereotypes and cliches what we do. So I was worried about all that. Truly, the only reason I agreed to participate is I was convinced the movie would never get made. And then we all of a sudden, about two years ago, heard there was a cast, there was a script, there was a filming schedule. They said, you know, is it okay if the actor contacts you? And then our lives got very weird because <laughs> we were just having dinner with like Mark Ruffalo and Richard Adams. And it's funny because we thought it was kind of social. I thought it was like, oh, we're, at, we're having dinner, we're taking a walk. Not till we watched the movie did we realize that all that time had been researched for them. Like we were being studied and analyzed and observed. I mean, I think this movie is an incredibly authentic portrayal of how we do our jobs. And the reason I think it's so authentic is that they work with us so closely to make it that way. So we want to talk about how accurate the movie is, and is there any part of the investigation that didn't make it in the movie that you wish had? Uh, I think it's incredibly accurate. I think that, I would say they left nothing, I think they got everything in that was important. The movie covers a five-month investigation because that's how long it took us to get to the point where we published our first story. And obviously, I mean, they had to take five months and compress it into two hours, so there's some dramatic license taken. For example, there's a scene on a golf course. In real life, that probably was a telephone conversation. But two hours of telephone conversations is not gonna make an interesting movie. So they took appropriate dramatic license in my view and they took conversations, put them in restaurants, bars, golf courses. And so there's also a scene that provides some unintended comic relief when there's the AOL billboard over the Glow Building. Um, if the internet had been more prominent back when you were doing the reporting in 2001, 2002, how do you think that would have affected your work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very funny scene. They did Photoshop that in. And I think the reason they did it was to remind people this was the early era of the internet, right? I mean, we, we put our stories online, which of course is so basic now, but this was truly the early stages of putting your story on the web so that it had wider reach than just being on the doorsteps of people who reach it. And you and all your colleagues grew up Catholic. Uh, do you think that affected any of your reporting? And was it intimidating to report negative information about such a powerful institution, especially in Boston? I think the fact that we had all grown up in Catholic families helped us do the story because we understood the psyche where you would have that kind of deference to the church. We really were never intimidated. I mean, we knew we were taking on a very powerful, beloved institution, but we also knew we had what was increasingly seeming like a very powerful story and that it was important to tell it. One of the moments that stands out to most viewers is the scene where your character, played by Rich McAdams, visits a priest at his house and asks if he has molested any children in his parish, and he says yes. Is this an accurate representation of your investigation? What were you thinking at that moment? So uh, it is accurate, although there was some dramatic license taken here, which is another reporter and I had interviewed this priest separately. The interviews didn't happen until after the movie ends. Again, the movie ends when we publish our first story. At that point in real life, we actually hadn't had an interaction with a, with a bad priest yet. We had one probably three weeks later. And I think in terms of what I was feeling, I mean, I think you saw this kind of conveyed on Rachel's face, which I thought she did a good job of acting through facial expression. It's just kind of a sense of shock, I think, that, um, I mean, I think you got a window into kind of someone's twisted rationalization for why they did what they did. You know, some people have asked me if I think that priest had dementia. I don't think so. I think that was just his rationalization. Conversely, how was it to interview victims of sexual abuse. 
Yeah, you know, this was one of the hardest parts of his job, is that we were dealing with people who were incredibly damaged even decades later by something that had happened when they were children or adolescents. These are usually adult men. And keep in mind that a lot of this abuse was happening in the 50s and 60s, when society was so much less open about sexuality than we are now. There's also enormous deference to the Catholic Church, particularly in a place like Boston, so people were less inclined to believe he was a priest. So I think we just tried to be very sensitive. So in terms of funding, how much money did the Globe spend for this investigation? Marty Barron, the former Globe editor, who's now the executive editor of the Washington Post, gave an off-the-cuff cuff estimate at one point that he think it cost the Globe a million dollars. Now, I feel like that number sounds high, but I think that Marty is probably factoring in the salaries of all the reporters who worked on this for a year and a half. And speaking of the payoff of exposure, so the Globe's reporting in Boston kind of caused a chain reaction. Did you expect that reaction? Yeah, there was an incredible chain reaction. We published in, uh, began publishing in January and published for the next year as the story grew and grew. And probably around April of the year we published, it was almost like, um, you could almost see this cloud where other newspapers around the country began reporting and all of a sudden it was popping up everywhere because people realized it's not a Boston problem, it's a system problem. And then it began international as well. I did not anticipate that. I mean, we really thought there may even be picketers or demonstrators or protesters outside the Globe. We thought there may be some backlash that people felt like the Globe was anti-Catholic. But I believe that because we showed people the documents, which as I sort of characterized earlier, made the story bulletproof, I think it's hard for there to be a blame the messenger effect when you're simply showing people the documents that were, that were uh, the organization that you're writing about kept. 